Well, cool. Welcome. This is my professional development series. It's for it's College Essay Guide for Schools members, but we decided to open it up to, to the larger group. Um, on this session, here's what we're going to cover. I'm just going to share my screen for a second. And um, I'm going to be covering a lot of stuff. What is the purpose of the personal statement? Why, do, why is it that I tell students to pretty much ignore the Common App personal statement prompts? What is the difference between a personal statement and an English essay? We'll talk about that briefly. Um, I'm going to talk about two different structures that students can use for their personal statement. Talk about some of my favorite brainstorming exercises, exercises for if a student has faced a challenge, and exercises for if a student hasn't faced a challenge. I'm going to talk about um, like just a, I'll, I'll probably share one maybe example essay because we won't have time for a lot because I'm going to try to keep this about 40 minutes. So we have lots of time for Q and A. Um, how to help a student get a sense of if a topic is likely to stand out or not. Um, what are some common topics, topics maybe to steer clear of, what to do if they have a great topic or maybe not so much. And then I'm going to share with you two ways to help students relatively quickly, you know, uh, to help a large group of students relatively quickly using this choose your own adventure tool, which I'll tell you more about in just a second. Because so many of you don't know what it is. Let me just tell you what College Essay Guide for Schools and Organizations is. It's basically a suite of resources that I put together that's pay what you can. Um, here's how it works. Um, I have basically one week personal statement boot camps where I've got a bunch of different options. So I've got an option in May, late May, for those who are just kind of getting into the end of APs. And then there's a mid-June option and then an August option. And the way it works is students log on for a session like this. I take them through a bunch of brainstorming exercises. They go away and do some work. On Wednesday, they come back. I talk to them about how do you know if it's a good topic or not? How do you revise? They go away, do some work. On Friday, I give them some more feedback and we sort of analyze some essays live. And then in October, I'm going to do a supplemental essay boot camp. So we're going to talk about the Why Us essay and the activities list and the extracurricular activity essay. And then I'm going to do a personal insight question boot camp for those of you who are in California or have students applying to California. I'm doing one in uh, early to mid-June, June 12th and 13th. And then I'm going to do one in October. And then in addition to that, some other things that I'm including with this are professional development sessions like this. There are more resources for, you know, for your English department, uh, for other folks that are on your team. And then I've got this choose your own adventure tool, which I'll tell you more about in just a little bit. And the cool thing about this, these boot camps and everything, like I said, it's pay what you can. If you wouldn't mind, Ashley, just sharing the link so that folks can see more about this. But like I said, day one is brainstorming and then outlining and writing and revising and up-leveling. So my hope here, the goal with this, let me just share my face for a second for variety, is to make your job easier. And so we designed this thing and I was, and this, this came about last year when the pandemic hit and we were, everyone was sort of like, what am I gonna do for essays? And I was like, hey, let's put together a free boot camp. So we did this free boot camp. It went pretty well. Um, students, you know, followed along, wrote some, you know, created some essays. And then it was sort of like over to you for like, you know, helping them with revisions and, you know, making sure that they were staying on task. But we got some great feedback, made it even better, added some more options for dates and the like, and decided to, you know, offer it as we do with all of our courses, pay what you can. So we have sort of a suggested cost, but I just want to affirm to everybody, and I'll say this again at the end, if your school doesn't have money, can't afford something like this, don't worry, just click $0.00 you get it for free. So that's a real offer. I want the, I'd rather you use the resources, I'd rather your students use the resources than not. Um, and so if you, if your school has a budget, great, but if not, don't worry about it. So, all right, let's get into the content. I'm Ethan. I'm the college essay guy. I've spent a lot of, and by the way, if you've got questions, please feel free to throw them in the chat box. If they're questions related to content, I'll handle them in the Q and A. If they're questions related to CEG for school specifics, We've got um, Ashley, who's uh, who's standing by, who's, if you email help at collegeessayguy.com, Ashley is the one who responds to those. Thank you, Ashley, for handling those. She'll get back to you um, on that. And um, if you get tech issues, oftentimes if you just like refresh the screen, it comes back and it works. Um, but it, you can also private message us. If you're like, oh, I don't wanna chat in front of all these people, you can just private message us and Ashley will get back to you on those. So, all right, let's jump into the content. Here we go. So, 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 let me go I'm sharing my screen. All right. So inside, this is the choose your own adventure tool that I mentioned. This is what students get access to. So this is sort of the, the, the student view. And I'm going to walk through some different pieces of it uh, because it answers some of the questions that I want to cover. So one of the questions, you know, that students have is, 
you know, first of all, by the way, I kind of skipped over the intro of me, but if you've never met me before, I'm the guy who spends eight to 12 hours a day thinking about college essays. You know, my core values are ease, purpose, joy, and access. And um, I, I'm pretty much a nerd for college essays. Um, I'll, I'll skip the rest of the intro, but I've, I've spent a lot of time thinking about this. The purpose of the personal statement. So what is it? So I think that it's not, first of all, a chance to impress the reader with big words. You know this. This is not an English essay. This is not a recap of accomplishments. To me, this is the, the sort of highlightable phrase, the purpose of the college essay, and I'd say this to students all the time, is to demonstrate the skills, qualities, values, and interests that you'll bring with you to a college campus. Now, I'm gonna fast forward to the end of the session where some folks may be wondering, well, what if a student has a topic that you think isn't the best topic? Or what if a student is writing about something that is like a tricky topic, like a stigmatized topic, like mental health issues? If you come back to this phrase, it's a great centering phrase. Is this the best way to demonstrate the skills, qualities, values, and interests that you're gonna bring with you to college? And that's a great answer for any student who's like, I wanna write this essay about my grandmother. Is it the best way, right? I wanna write about such and such challenge that I experienced. Is this the best way? And the answer might be yes, but it's a good way of sort of giving students the ah. And oftentimes if it's a topic that you think maybe isn't gonna work or it's gonna be really hard to pull off, if you ask them this question, it'll help them recenter. So I'm fast forwarding to later when I'm gonna talk a little bit more about how do you help a student determine which topic is a great topic or not. I'm gonna come back to this phrase. What does a great personal statement have? If you've read my book, you've seen these four qualities, but if you haven't, don't worry. Here are the four qualities to me. The great keys to a, a personal statement are number one, core values, right? How, what are the things that you would fight for? The things you would go to the mat for, as my friend Paula says. Insight or so what moments. How can you show the reader, the admissions reader, that you'll think critically? Can you surprise the reader a few times with what you end up saying? Vulnerability. Uh, you know, is that is the vulnerability? Is it truly personal? Like, do we get a sense of not just how your brain works, but how your heart works? Like, what again? This is connected to what you care about, but is it truly? You know, is it personal? Craft. In other words, did you clearly revise this, or is this just something you kind of dashed off? you know, in an hour and then submit it? Is it clear that you've made a series of choices and you could say, here's why I chose these things? A question just came from Chastity. I ordered your book. Is this the same information to support students? It's a little bit different. So some of the content will be similar, which you'll, you'll see in just a little bit, but some of the stuff I'm gonna share today and inside the tool are a little bit different. And I'll highlight those things, Chastity, when I get to those moments about how it's different. Um, and it's all of that is explained here inside the tool, so I won't go into it right now. But the big thing that, that I guess, you know, that I should mention about this is that I created this choose your own adventure tool after going through 300 essays in the time since I published my book and seeing that, you know, did, did students end up choosing, you know, I have these four types of essays and I found that the model that I had was pretty good, but there was a, a big piece missing in terms of students who aren't writing about challenges and who don't want to write about a career. You know, and so that's basically where how this this tool kind of expands on students who are in that category of like, I don't have challenges or I don't know what I'm gonna do in the future. This really expands for those students, gives them some more options. Now, what you'll see inside here is, um, and I'll get back to, I've got a big list of all those things. I'm gonna come back to all those. But the way this thing works is students click this, they download this workbook. And here, when they click down, there are a bunch of different exercises that they work through. And as they're working through the tool, they basically work through these exercises. So let me just paste this into a separate doc. There we go. And I'm gonna guide you through bit by bit some of these exercises today, okay? Um, purpose of the personal statements, we talked about that. Again, skills, qualities, values, interests that you'll bring with you to the college campus, okay? Why do I tell my students to ignore the common app prompts for the personal statement? So just to show my face for variety, I feel like that's not the best way necessarily to get students creatively thinking about what they're gonna bring in their personal statement. If I start to ask you, hey, make sure you pay attention to these prompts, students start to worry, start to oftentimes overthink, well, what are they gonna think of this? And what, what are they want, wanting? What are they looking for? And I find that there are actually more easeful ways and more creative and frankly, fun ways of getting students excited about potential topics. I'm gonna share some of those in just a couple minutes. So I tell them, don't worry too much about the personal statement prompts because we're gonna go through some exercises that are gonna help you generate content and stories and ideas that are ultimately gonna lead you to a cool personal statement topic. And what are you trying to do? 
demonstrate skills, qualities, values, interests that you'll bring with you to college. And we're going to, we're going to get there is what I tell them. And then ultimately just pick whichever prompt, you know, ends up connecting to whatever story you told them. So, so find your story, tell it, tell it in the best way you can, and then look at the prompts. And it's probably going to pick, go for the one that says, tell us about your background or topic of your choice, right? Which works for pretty much everything. Okay. Um, let me just grab another, um, a doc here, a little, I'm going to share my screen for a second. So what is the difference between an English class essay and a personal statement? This is one that you probably know, but here's an, uh, I find a, a pretty useful image for thinking about it. You know, in, in, in an English class essay, we're talking about, we're, you know, we've got an argument that's supported with evidence, right? Here's my thesis and I'm proving it. Whereas in a personal statement, you may not have a thesis or the thesis is implied or maybe the thesis comes at the end, right? You got this whole essay that's just like, you know, giving me lots, of, you know, sides of the student. And then at the end, it's like, we got that thesis that kind of ties everything together. Okay. Um, you know, obviously that with tone, the English class essays are going to be more analytical. We're examining a text. We're looking at a thing and saying, here's what I think about it. Whereas obviously with a, with a personal statement, the student is the text, you know, and they're analyzing themselves. We don't use I statements. There's not really vulnerability in an English essay. Whereas in personal statements, yeah, bring those I statements. What do you think? Tell me about you. It's hard to not write a personal statement without the word I. And whereas an English essay helps you to understand how a student thinks, I think a personal statement helps you understand how a student thinks, feels, works, plays, and lives. All the things, right? As they say. So um, let me just keep going down my, my list of bullet points. If you've got questions, please feel free to throw them in. So I want to talk to you about two different kinds of structure that I suggest to students. And then I want to give you some brainstorming exercises, but first a sip of water. So when students are, you know, trying to figure out topics, like I mentioned, some of them are writing about challenges, some of them not so much. If a student isn't, doesn't have a big challenge to write about, which is oftentimes most students, because even if they do have a challenge, they may not want to write about it for all sorts of reasons. So what I call that is a montage essay. And a montage is basically jumping around in space and time and finding something to connect them. So the metaphor I like is like, imagine beads on a bracelet, right? These are all the different skills, qualities, values, interests, sides of me that I wanna show. And that thread of the bracelet connects everything. So that's a montage, okay? So I'm gonna put this aside, non-challenges based essays, montage. Whereas a narrative is what I'm, I mean, a narrative is a story, right? But it's a, um, this is what I call a challenges-based essay. And for that, it's less about, give me all the skills, qualities, values, interests, and connect them together with a common theme. It's more like, tell me about whatever challenge you experienced, but only spend the first third of the essay, the most, the first half at the most. Then I want you to get into what did you do about it? And then what did you learn through that experience? So one third, one third, one third. So again, montage, different sides of you connected by a common thread. Narrative, Challenge is based. Challenge, what did I do about it? What did I learn? Okay, so those are the two structures that are the ways that I think about this. And, and how you get to these topics, I think are a little bit different. So let's talk first about the montage. How do you help a student come up with an idea for an essay? So what I found after looking at about 300 different essays is that when it comes to, you know, when it comes to finding a topic, there are, you know, many different ways to do it. And, I found that pretty reliably, there were seven different paths that students were, you know, were using to come up with their topic. And so if you go inside the choose your own adventure tool, which if you have CEG for schools, you've already got this. But if you click on montage path and you click brainstorming, you'll see if you click beginning, I talk briefly, what is a montage anyway? And I give this little bracelet and analogy that I just gave. And when you click the next module here, how do you brainstorm your montage content? So what I've got here is a series of exercises that will walk students through finding in about 20 minutes. I think a student can find five or 10 ideas. If you're doing this, you're going to find at least 10 ideas for essays because your brain works like this. And you probably got that counselor spidey sense where you see ideas everywhere. But with students you know, going through this pretty reliably, students will find an idea. Now, does it work? That's what the next modules are about. But the first exercise that I really recommend is this values exercise. And what is it? It's a simple exercise, and this is inside the student workbook. 
if you click values exercise, where students basically identify their top 10 values and then their top five, and then they whittle it down to three. And then I say, pause, we'll come back to these because I feel, I feel like values and getting a sense of what those are are gonna really help students in so many parts of the process, in particular into the personal statement. So they do the values exercise. And then once they do that, and by the way, this is all in this video that's, that's inside this, but this is just sort of the written version in case students prefer to read it. The first exercise, and I call these my mini exercises, is what I call I love or I know. And it basically involves spending a minute making a random list of things that a student loves. Because I find that oftentimes when students are writing about something that they love or they know a lot about, that can lead to a cool topic. So what, do I'm what am I talking about? You know, board games, World War II history, constructed languages. What are all those things that you love? You know, what do you love? Clean laundry, you know, physics. I love my grandmother's pupusas, you know, and you can do this with a partner. I, I walk students through how to do that. And they generate this huge list of I love and then a whole huge list of I know. And again, they do this inside their, their workbook. I'm just going to scroll down and they, they type it all in here. Now, the reason I'm having them do it inside this workbook, they make a copy of this, a Google Doc copy, because then, depending on your caseload, you're going to have them share it with you if you've got a smallish caseload, or if you've got a larger caseload, you're going to have them share it with their whoever their writing buddy is, the writing partner. And we can talk more about this later, but one of the things that I recommend is that students go through this process with somebody, hopefully, if, if possible, it's you if you've got a small enough caseload, but if not, they can share it with somebody else, and there's guidance in here for how to give great feedback. So they walk through this, they do the I love, I know exercise, and then many, and that takes three to four minutes. And then they do the essence objects exercise, which again, if you've read my book, you've been on my website, you've seen this, but it's here, 20 questions to help you brainstorm. What are specific objects that could represent different moments, different memories, different relationships in your life? Like what's a food that reminds you of your family? Because that could lead to a personal statement or a part of one, you know? What's a dream or goal you have for the future and what object represents it because oftentimes it's these tangible objects that represent these things that help you know draw us into the story more make it more interesting what's on your bedroom walls and, and we're, we're creating a collage of stuff for these brainstorming exercises spend five minutes doing that then they move on i call this the random questions one what's your actual superpower how do you make people laugh when have you felt most alone uh, what would you tell your younger self if the zombie apocalypse came tomorrow, what particular skill would you use to survive? There was a student last year who used this to inspire her whole essay. And she said, there are actually a set of skills that if, I, if a zombie apocalypse came, that would actually serve me really well. And I want to tell you about them. And that became her whole essay. That was a surprise. So this is going to help them generate, again, five minutes on this. Another mini exercise that students can do. And I, and I recommend students do these all in 20 minutes, you know, so that they're just boom, boom, rapid fire. What's a career if you have one that you're interested in or several? And then name two to three qualities that you have that you'll, that'll make you great in that career. This one is my favorite one lately, is the identity. How do you identify? I'm a reader, a jazz lover, identifies queer, Colombian, singer, a feminist. Give me all your identities. And I'll show you in a second how that can lead to a cool essay. Another interesting way of thinking about this is like, what are the communities that you're a part of? So I'm a member, uh, you know, I'm a part of the you know, music community because I play in the band. Oh, cool. So I'm a band member. That's an identity that I have. So there's discovering identities. Related to that, but not exactly the same as home. What are the places where you feel most like you belong? Or for some students, I don't feel like I belong anywhere. That could be an interesting topic. Of course, you know, then they're like the, the, the quality of like belonging or not belonging. But here's some ways I work to belong. Uh, that could be an interesting topic. And it could be one home, like the weight room is my home. And here are the different sides of me that I explore and experience in the weight room. Or here are different homes that I experience. And then I love asking students. I use this one minute clip from Pixar's Inside Out. If you saw this movie, one of the things they talk about is, you know, what are the islands of your personality? And in the movie, which is this young girl named Riley, these islands of personality, which are inspired by her uh, core memories, are friendship, honesty island, family island. These are the different things that are really important to her. But also these are her values, right? Goofball island, being silly, hockey island. And so one of the things I'll ask students is like, what are the different islands of your personality, the different sides of you? Well, there's like the soccer side of me, and then there's like the 
you know, the, the, the older brother side of me. And then there's like the, you know, the debate captain side of me, not because a student is going to necessarily put all of those in their essay, but I want them to be thinking about these different sides of themselves because some of them might end up in the personal statement, but some of them could end up in supplemental essays, right? So students spend about 20 minutes doing this. Once they've done this, they've got a whole bunch of ideas. Okay. And as you scroll down here, there's a little exercise that students can use to test to see whether or not something could make an interesting topic. So here it is. Here's, here's my example. So games. So with games, for example, you know, which is a, would be a good topic for me, I can connect it to so many different values. So here's the test. You, you, you basically draw this little jellyfish looking thing. That's what my students called it. And you, you draw it at the top, games. And then you ask yourself, how many values could I connect this to? And I could connect games to, for example, connection or creativity. And for the values, they just go back to this values list, right? I can connect games to creativity and fun and laughter and family, you know, knowledge, competition, all of those different sides, right? Oh, wow. Now I see the games is actually something that's going to be what I would call a really elastic topic. Okay, great. So this could be a cool topic for me. And then what I tell students inside the tool is like, okay, now brainstorm another possibility, just so you have another back pocket option. But if I, if you have a student who picks a topic like this and they can't connect it to many different values, they think it might be a good topic, but then they're like, well, I can't really connect it to much. First, there's a way to encourage them and guide them with examples to thinking about ways they can connect it. But if they can't, then maybe they keep brainstorming and try to look for other topics. So it's a quick little, you know, that, that's another quick little test. I'm fast forwarding a little bit, but how does a student know if something is a good topic or not? If they can connect it to a variety of values. Let me just underscore this point for just a second. Take something that you know a lot about. So just, just for a second, think of something that you know a lot about and, you know, counseling or, you know, students or nature, or whatever it is, whatever it is that you love. Look at, look and see how many values you can connect it to for a second. probably a bunch, right? If we had more time, we were in person, I would say, let's just try this. But now take something that you don't know as much about. For me, that would be like pottery. I just don't know a lot about pottery. Um, I could imagine, I could make up something about how I can contribute to personal development. I can imagine that's true, but I just don't know a lot about it. So it's going to be less elastic. I keep using that word, stretchy enough to talk about lots of different sides of me. Okay. So that's on the montage side. Let me share my face again, just for variety. If students are trying to come up with different ideas for this montage, the ones that I just mentioned, I love, I know, the essence objects exercise, skills or superpowers. What are your, what are your superpowers? That's another question I mentioned that I love to ask. What are you really great at? Because it could be that skill or superpower leads to a topic. What's a career that you're, a part, that you're interested in? Identity. Home. Let me actually spend, I'm going to spend two more minutes on the montage side because it's so exciting. And this is a big way that it's different from my book. So if folks have read my book, they're like, how is this different? It's this. <laughs> and then, so once students do that and they've got all these different ideas, then they go to this next module and they choose a path. Okay, great. So pick a path. There are seven different paths that I mentioned. Is it something that you love or know a lot about? You know, superpower, et cetera. And they scroll down here and they pick one of these paths. Well, let's say I'm kind of interested in the identity essay because I, when I was doing my brainstorming, I was able to come up with like four or five different identities. And I'm like, that could be kind of cool. So I click identity. And then when I get into the identity method, again, there's a little short 10 minute video where students, you know, I walk them through some sample essays and then they get in here and they see some examples. So for example, students, you know, identify one of the student identifies as queer, but in many different ways you know, or culturally identity, like it's Greek. And here are five reasons why it's awesome being Greek. So this is the Greek essay. And then there are some students who have various identities they want to write about, you know, all the roles that I play, sister, mother, mover, shaker, navigator, chameleon, storyteller, right? So they get into all of those and, you know, each one of those could show some different side of them. And then what you'll see below this is a student who wrote an awesome essay with various identities. So I'm Mexican the sound of frying empanadas and the smell of burning peppers. My mother calling me mi vida, my relatives kissing my cheek. So the student gets into all, you know, he just shows his Mexican identity. I'm going to, for the sake of time, I'm not going to read the whole thing. Those are all me. And then he talks about being Chinese, you know, the constant pressure to get good grades, my father's desire for me to become a doctor and the never ending, how are you so bad, bad at math? You're Asian, that identity. And then I'm American and then details about the American identity. So all of these you know, different identities 
basically come together to say, these are all me and here are all these identities. He says, my identity is not a singular entity, but a conglomeration of experiences, beliefs, and origins. And I love this essay because it's so beautifully written and beautifully vulnerable, but also because students, you know, can be, we can let them know that you don't have to, you know, just be one thing in these essays. You don't have to commit to just one thing. You can show all the awesomeness of who you are. So for each of these example essays, and I, I basically give two different examples for each one of these, you know, seven paths. I talk about these four qualities that each essay demonstrates. So I mentioned values, you know, in this essay, the student has so many values, culture, family, intellectual curiosity, vulnerability, humor. There's also a lot of insight. You know, there are moments when, it, when and I, I think a great moment of insight is something that surprises you know, question, you know, if in, one, in one case, he's talking about his Catholic identity and he says, having something to believe in, questioning what you believe in. And there's insight into his brain that he's able to hold these conflicting identities. And that to me shows his maturity. If there's vulnerability. Again, there's craft and you'll see lots of moments, even the, the repetition of like, those are all me, you know, this is me. There's just this nice repetition of like, you know, that just adds a nice structure to it. And then another student wrote about a pirate identity. And there's like, he says, there's nothing worse than waking up and realizing you were meant to be a pirate. Pirate. I said that a bit like a pirate. So you see here, the student is, you know, less than the other essay was, there are moments of humor, but it was more serious. This one is playful, but you've still got lots of different values and he's focused on one particular identity. So anyway, in here, there's like a, a walkthrough for each of these. Um, and then my advice, and this is just, you know, outside of this tool is that students should, once they've gone through um, and they've brainstormed whatever topic, I really think it's a good idea for students to brainstorm, I mentioned this earlier, brainstorm one to two more topics. Why? Because the first idea may not work. I want them, for example, if they send you their draft, I want them to have a second topic so that when you go, I'm not sure if this is going to be the strongest topic. What else you got, you know, or more, more, more out. I mean, what I, what I really want them to do is to create two to three outlines that I ask them to do and then send those to you so that before they get way down the line, you know how this goes four or five drafts in, they start with here are two or three different ideas. Here are some outlines. Um, and I'll talk about outlines in the next PD, how do students create a good outline? I think it's so important for them to create a good outline because once they do that, they have a sense of like, is this going to fly or not? You know? Um, also students might come up and oftentimes there's this bias towards the first idea that we came up with, you know, also students are sometimes pressured by, you know, just outside forces. We'll say that to write about a particular challenge that maybe not their strongest topic. Uh, and then all, other times, so, you know, when students brainstorm multiple ideas, they can combine them into really cool possibilities and it, it makes it a more complex idea. And then I say, and this is also your homework assignment before moving on to the next module. Um, I want to talk about, I've talked about montage a little bit. I want to talk about narrative for just a few minutes. So if students have faced challenges, I, you know, one of the exercises that I have them do is something called the feelings and needs exercise. So I really want students to feel like they have options. And yes, there are these 20 minutes of brainstorming to get all these montage ideas. But for students who face challenges, I want them to know there is a path for you. And there is an exercise that they can do to, to find out if this idea is a good idea um, and, and, and is there going to be content. And so this is called the feelings and needs exercise. It walks them through a series of questions in about 20 minutes as well. And once they finish that, they, they should have some content and they should actually even have an outline, even though they won't know it right away for, for a personal statement. And so what I do after the exercise here is I guide students through. And just for the sake of time, I'm not going to guide you through the whole exercise now. But, you know, students, I, I show them a, a sample essay written by a student who went through the feelings and needs exercise. And he talked about challenges in his life and what he did about it, what he learned. And you kind of see through this little analysis at the end, here's how the author took these challenges that he experienced and worked them into his personal statement. Okay. And then, like I said, I love this exercise because in like 10 to 15 minutes, maybe they take 20 minutes, they can map out their whole essay. And I, I, I point that out here. So they start to go, oh, maybe this could be an essay. But then the question you're probably asking is how do students decide on a topic? And I think it's I think it's sometimes a little bit different when it comes to narrative versus montage. So when students are trying to figure out if a, a challenges-based essay could work, I think one of the things we're looking for is are these truly difficult or compelling challenges? And does a student have insight, a some so what, that really gives a sense of what they learned from it? And the more that the more compelling the challenge is and the more compelling the insight is, 
then I think the more likely it is to stand out. Not always, because sometimes the student may be able to take some smaller challenge and turn it into a cool essay. Like one student, you know, got knocked out of a spelling bee and he wrote a great essay on it, but it took a high level of craft and it took him many drafts to get there. And, but students who've got kind of meh, challenges, like I got a bad grade or I didn't make the football team, you know, and didn't care too much, but I needed a challenge, I thought, for an essay. And their insight is like, I don't know if I learned too much. It's going to be harder to stand out. Now, I don't tell students you absolutely shouldn't use this topic. I just say it's going to maybe be a little bit easier to stand out if you've got something like, you know, that's that's got these qualities. Now, on the montage side, if a student's trying to decide on a topic, I walk them through a slightly different two, two questions. Number one, is it elastic? In other words, is your topic, whatever you're considering, something that you can connect to a variety of different things? And number two, is it maybe somewhat uncommon? In other words, something that other students aren't maybe writing about. And same kind of math graph, where the more uncommon and elastic your topic is, maybe the, the easier it is going to be to stand out. So an essay that's on, let's say you spent your last eight years on medieval blacksmithing, like no other students can be writing about medieval blacksmithing or maybe like very few. So that's going to be easier to stand out. Now, I'm not saying a topic has to be uncommon because I've also seen students write amazing essays on common topics like cooking or food, which are you know pretty common. Um, and one of the things I walk students through, and I'll show you the module in just a second, is like, what are the more common topics? But if it's not elastic, like in other words, if I, if I have a topic, like a student said to me once, I, I think I should write an essay about my working at the ice cream store where I work. And I was like, ice cream shop. I was like, cool. We tried to brainstorm. And I was like, you know, it doesn't seem like there's a lot here. How long have you been working there? And she's like, I started like two weeks ago. And I was like, yeah, I don't know. I mean, let's, let's keep brainstorming, right? Because that to me is not an elastic topic. She just doesn't have a lot to say about it, right? So this is just a, a simple framework for getting students to think about which topic might help, might be more likely to stand out. But again, I want them to brainstorm a couple different topics before they start to get into the drafting phase. Um, because I mentioned it, let me just share with you, because sometimes at this point people are like, Ethan, can you give me some uncommon examples? You know, And so one of the things that I say is that I don't recommend, I think students should not use an extracurricular activity as their personal statement topic. Because first of all, lots of selective schools, as you know, ask for an extracurricular activity essay, put it there, right? Put it in your activities list. If you need to put it in your additional info, a little extra, you can. Like for example, if you've just spent your whole life in marching band and that's why you couldn't do other extracurricular activities, that's a great thing to put in your additional information section. You don't need to put it in your activities list, additional info, and in your personal statement. You've got another opportunity in your personal statement to talk about other sides of you, right? So put it somewhere else, put it in your extracurricular activity. Also, everybody's writing the football essay or the violin essay or the mission trip essay, right? And so it's, it's harder to stand out. Again, I'm not saying don't, but I say, I'm talking like I'm talking to students. It's just going to be harder to, to differentiate because the readers already read 100 football essays. And it just takes a lot longer, you know, a lot more energy to do well. So I would actually call it when you're writing an extra curriculum, like if a student's writing a dance essay, that to me is an advanced, it's, it's advanced to try and pull that off and still, and also stand out. So here are some, again, not forbidden, just common extracurricular activity topics in my experience. And I list them here for students with all these caveats. But I do say, here are some topics that I would avoid because they're so common. The big performance essay. This is my friend, Laura at UCLA. I'm so tired of this essay where it's like, you know, sweaty palms are getting ready to go on stage and give the big speech. And then they deliver it and they realize I can do it. You know, I had more confidence than I thought. Or the big game essay, you know this one, right? You win or you lose, but win in life, right? Or the, the sports injury essay where it's like, you know, I, I lost the season, but I, you know, became back as manager and I learned a lot about life and about my, my grit and determination or the mission trip essay, right? Which is like someone of privilege, often going to a place where they meet some folks who have relatively less privilege and learn an important life lesson, usually in a short conversation or, you know, by building a house or giving them something. So those essays, I would, I would say, I wouldn't recommend because I think that it's just the quickest way to blend in. I'm also trying to be a, a friend. I don't know if any admission officers on this call, but hopefully this is like, oh yes, if we read no more of these essays, we'd be okay. Um, there's a guide here, which I'm not gonna get into right now of how to stand out if the extracurricular activity is common, which I, I walk through here. And then if because students wonder, well, what are some more uncommon topics? Not because, just again to say, not because I'm saying you should choose these and then you're gonna get into college, 
but these are some extracurricular activities that you know that are that are great topics but that you know not everybody's gonna be writing about you know like ventriloquism i've never seen a ventriloquism essay but i would like to see one one student uh worked construction you know since he was like 12 years old to support his family and that made an awesome essay so again must you choose an uncommon extracurricular activity to stand out no but it can be helpful in standing out okay in fact this is actually an important point the more common the topic is the more uncommon the connections need to be. In other words, the insights, the connections to different values, the language needs to be. I'm not going to get too much into that, but I think that's what helps differentiate a, you know, a, a common topic uh, and a boring essay from a, from a less common one. Um, so let me just make sure I'm gonna, on my bullet points. My favorite brainstorming exercises. So let me actually, so here's the things that I promised. And then I want to, in a few minutes, I want to get to questions. The reason I've settled on these exercises, I've tried a whole bunch, and these are the most productive and the most fun in my experience and in the feedback I've gotten from students. Um, we talked about brainstorming and narrative. I talked about it briefly. This is the feelings and needs exercise, and I went through the seven mini exercises. Um, if you want, I'm happy to talk about how these exercises have led to great essays. I don't know that we have a ton of time. Actually, I'm going to save a lot of that for next time, because next time on April 6th, I'm going to talk about, I'm going to devote actually most of the time to showing you how these brainstorming exercises can lead to great outlines, which lead to great essays. The simple assessment tool for helping a student determine if a topic is likely to help them stand out or not is this one. It's the how to decide on a topic, which is, again, for montage, it's, it's asking students, is the topic common or not? And is it, how elastic is it? And chart it on a spectrum. You know, and if it's more elastic, then it's down here. If it's less elastic, it's here. If it's more uncommon, and again, we're kind of trying to move up into the right top right-hand corner. Whereas just to recap really quick, for the narrative path, I'm asking students, how do you decide on a topic? Are the challenges compelling? And is the insight compelling? And difficult, and I know it's a weird thing. It's like, are students supposed to drudge up their biggest challenges and they're, you know, not necessarily, and there's context in that in here. But, you know, that to me, the compellingness of the challenges um, can really can really help them stand out. Um, and then if it's just okay, then, you know, maybe not so much. Um, and I talked about this one, the common personal statement topics. Okay, so what do you do if a student has a great topic? If, you, if, it's, if you're in the College Essay Guide for Schools program, if a student has a great topic, I would say send them on to the next module. So let's say the student does what I tell them to do. They brainstorm these topics. At the end of this, they go into this outlining module, which again, we'll talk about on April 6th. But when it, when it comes to outlining a narrative draft, so this actually, let me go up to montage for just a second because I started talking about that one. When students go into the outlining, they basically just walk through it. They pick whichever path makes most sense for them and it walks them through step-by-step step how to write their essay. So let's say a student is writing uh, about something that they love or know a lot about. So what they need is they've got their, whatever their topic is, four to seven different examples for their topic, which they've brainstormed in the previous module. So let me just, Go back to that for a second. So if a student has chosen I love or I know path, here are some different things that other students have written about. And they've seen a different, you know, an example essay and they go kind of get a sense of it. And then at the bottom of this, it's like, okay, here's how to get you started writing your I love or I know essay. So what's the thing? And then what are four to seven different examples for your topic? And I walk them through what that is. So they should have that coming in. So once they get into this, then they just walk through the path, like go through the next, you know, module, and it's going to walk you through how to bring in, you know, how to basically thicken and create more, you know, detail. So one of the things I tell students, for example, and I won't spend a ton of time on this, we can get to Q&A, but one of the things I tell students is like, don't focus too much on your opening, just make it simple, clear, and then move on to the middle, because that's going to be the most important part, right? Bring your, and bring your four, four to seven examples to life. So if a student, for example, uh, is writing about these different, this, in this example that I give, this animals in their life, what is the value that each animal represents? Because that's going to show the islands of your personality, the side of you that has patience, that has trust, right? These are the skills, qualities, values you're going to bring with you to college. And then for each one of these, give me some details that are going to help me see in each of your paragraphs how you've manifested these qualities, okay? So once we get a sense of those, then, okay, we start to see, is this really essay really going to work? And again, I'm going to get more, in, I'm going fast on this part right now because I'm going to get more into this, a lot more into this um, in, in, on April 6th. And then um, 
yeah. And then for the ending, I tell them, you know, if you like the beginning, like write an ending. It doesn't have to be super, you know, intense. It just needs to be an ending. So each of these experiences has shaped my end of the person I have today. It could be that simple because we really, again, want to just sort of know if the middle, if I'm going to be able to come up with examples to make this idea work. Okay. So that, that's the quick version of what I would tell students to do if the idea is working or that's, that's really going to give them a sense of if the idea is working or not. In the third PD that we do, I'm going to get into, I'm not even going to touch revising today, but I'm going to get into things like, how do you, like, when is a good time to, you know, clarify, to change your topic? How do you uplevel each of your paragraphs? You know, how do you sometimes students obsess over openings? And I don't think students should be thinking about that early on because I want them to figure out if the middle works, but we'll get into how do you know if the, the opening you know, works or here are just different ideas for how to make the opening more impactful. And then this is a huge one. How do you bring more insight into your essay? Finally, I came up with an exercise that helps students bring more insight into their essay. And I think it's the key to standing out, especially with the montage essay. I mentioned it with a challenges based essay, but in those little ends of the paragraphs. And then I talked about how to make sure the essay flows and, and that sort of thing. So um, let's shift here. Let me make sure that I get everything. Um, oh, and if they, so if they don't have a good topic, I just send students back to brainstorming. So for those of you who are in CEG for schools, if they've sent you, and I'm, you know, I, I'll talk about this more later, but if a student has sent you, if they've gone through the brainstorming one to two more topics, and you know, at the end of this, it says, you know, once you've gotten, you basically approve your own topic or email your two to three outlines to one of the people mentioned above, and there's a little simple template. And for those of you who are, you know, you know, already logged into this, the counselors, um, you'll know what I'm talking about. But essentially. What I say is, I tell students at the end of this, I say, when it comes to, you know, I, I, what I would recommend is get your topic approved by someone else if you can. And so I tell them option A is to ask your counselor or another expert, you know, for feedback. And here's the email. You're going to get copied and pasted on this email. I'm hoping to write a personal statement that'll help me stand out and show many parts of who I am. And then here's this little two minute video that explains to whoever the reviewer is, here's how this whole tool works. And give me some feedback on whether or not this topic can work. And there are certain questions that I think students need to be asking on the montage side and certain questions they need to be asking on the, on the narrative side. If you want to, I can get into those in the Q&A that will help a reviewer, you know, you or someone else, give them quick feedback. Because my hope with this, my goal, and I'll, I'll share with you some of the counselor resources in just a second if you haven't seen them yet. But my hope with this is that students should be able to send you their draft, again, by just sharing with you their Google Doc. Because you'll see this is going to have all their brainstorming stuff and then it's going to have an example outline, but it's going to have the students, you know, draft or it's going to have their outlines in here. And you can just basically scan through and see if something's working or not. And if it's not working, you can go back up into their brainstorming and kind of go, OK, well, let's take a look at what are some of the other ideas you brainstormed. Ooh, there's this cool thing that you said, you know, a lot about World War II history. Tell me more about that. Could that become an interesting topic? Because I know that you're such a you know fan of history, you know, and that you based on what you know of the student it's going to give you much more content to help them pretty quickly decide on a topic. Okay. It's going to, because again, it's all in one place. That's the hope here so that it makes things easier. Um, for those folks, and this is for counselors who are feeling like, you know what, I'd love to, um, you know, lead my students. So there are a couple different options. So some of you, if you're signed up for CEG for schools, that means you plan to have your students do one of my, one of these boot camps in May, June, or in August, and students get to pick. And then they're going to go through the tool on their own, okay? And that's one group. Another group would like to lead students through their own brainstorming workshop and then have students work through the tool on their own. So what I've got here is I've created this, a simple one-page guide to giving a great workshop. And if you want to do this, awesome, do it. Here are the exercises. I've linked to them all here with a little recommended time outline. And then underneath this, here's a downloadable PowerPoint template. You just click here, check this out. My friend, Hannah, my, my colleague, Hannah did this. And you just go here and you go to file and you go to make a copy, copy the entire presentation, put your name here, just type your name in, give a hat tip to college essay guy, thanks Ethan, and run with it. And you can delete the slides, you can change them. This is some of the exercises. This is an exercise I mentioned, the essence objects exercise. You can guide them through these different things. This is the this is me exercise I mentioned. And boom, narrative structure, everything that I just talked to you is basically inside this PowerPoint. Okay, so take it, God be with you, as they say in Shakespeare, God bless, and go lead an awesome workshop. I, I, want, I want you to have the tools to be able to do that.
And I'm trying to take away the barrier of like, oh, then I'm going to create the PowerPoint and everything. Here's the PowerPoint. Okay. If you want to do a follow-up workshop, I've got this one on, you know, uh, on how basically how to do a great topic selection or outlining workshop, which I won't get into right now, but this is all, I'll just go back to where this is. If you click counselors, this is the counselors resources. This is the counselor sort of homepage. If you've got a little more time and you want to use this as a college essay curriculum, like you want to use it in English classes or something like that, just click here. And there's, you can do the in-class model, which means they do all the work either in class, or if you're an English teacher listening, or you could do flipped classroom, which is like, do some work inside the tool and then come back and we'll work on it together. And there's different counselor versions of how to map these out in terms of, you know, what do you do each day? Okay. Underneath this, here's how to give feedback using the tool. It's a quick guide that's a little bit more in depth than what I've already shared. There's a quick guide to the cliche topics. Um, there's the, 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 oh, the example essay. So there's tons of example essays inside and it's all, you know, these are basically just all of the examples. And some of them I've mentioned, like this is me essay, the animals essay. These are all just here on one page. So that makes it really easy to navigate that. So this is for folks who are signed up for CEG for schools already. Cause again, part of the whole purpose of the session, even though it didn't turn out this way was, was to be sort of just a PD of like a walkthrough of how to use the tool with your students. So let me just go back to the counselors page. So there are those of those folks who are going to be like just leading a college essay guy workshop. Then there are those folks who are, or sorry, sorry, they're going to have Ethan lead a workshop and then have students go through the tool on their own. Then there are those folks who want to lead their own workshop. Again, that's the te template and the, the outline. And then if you want to become more familiar with the tool, so you can become faster at knowing how to help a student with an essay issue, you know, there are two ways of doing this. Here's a little guide to doing that. But if you have a quick question about like you, you feel like a student needs more brainstorming advice you know, brainstorm. You just click there and here's the link to where to send them to go to brain here, go brainstorm more in the, on the montage side and you send them the link, you know, uh, or if a student is like, let's say they've written their first draft, but you know, they're, or they're, they're struggling to write the first draft. This walks them through how to do that. And so the, again, the purpose here is like for you to read an essay and then within like three minutes or so be like, you know what? I think you need more brainstorming. Boom, go here. Or you know what? I think this is pretty good, but I think it needs a stronger beginning. So go here. Or I feel like the challenges in your essay may not be all that compelling. You just go here and you just send them the link and it just keeps them, you know, moving along so that you can go to the next student and help them, you know, help and my my I've I've you know I've led this, I used this last year on one of my courses and I had I think 150 students or so that were sending me essays. And I was able to get through anywhere from 20 to 30 essays in about an hour, you know, going, I got, got pretty quick with this. So it takes a little time. This is why I've called this next level advanced to be able to get really familiar with the tool. Some of you on this call are in my, the other course right now, learning how, you know, sort of how to navigate the tool. And it's a lot of information. I know that. Um, but for those of you who are just, you know, who want students to just be able to like walk through the tool. Great. That's what the way it's built. It walks them through step-by-step step and they'll email you when they need you basically. Um, so, but um, bum bum. Oh, good question. Um, do counselors need to attend the writing boot camps with the students you're leading? Not necessarily, Chastity. And and I would say do it if you want to. A lot of the stuff that I'm going to be walking them through. Let me stop sharing my screen for a second. A lot of the stuff I'm going to be walking them through is going to be stuff that you probably already know. But if you want to know like just where they're at, or if you want to kind of treat it as another PD, because some sometimes folks get more out of like, I say things in different ways or I cover different things, but I'm basically walking them through the, the tool. And just so that you know, Chastity, what I'm walking them through each day, it's really simple. But day one, I'm walking them through brainstorming. I do brainstorming montage and then I do brainstorming narrative and I give them homework to finish module one. That's Monday. Wednesday, we're going to talk about outlining and writing, outlining and writing. And so if you want to know what I did with them, you can just go in and just like scan that information and see it. Friday, I'm going to talk about how do you revise. I'm going to basically start going through the module and then say go through the rest of it so that hopefully by the end of that week, they've got some ideas generated on Monday. They, they're testing them out on Wednesday. And then by Friday, they've got some, you know, they're, they're, they're getting a sense of like, okay, how do I revise an idea? Hopefully that they've picked. Will all students have picked their perfect topic? No, right? Some students will have gotten an idea and they'll be flowing and some others are still going to be struggling, but hopefully they've got a set of tools and a, a place that they can go back to. So if they get stuck, I mean, in the, in the way that this, I have a question about, you know, this is on the, the student page. Let me just show you, you know, for students who have, who are going through this, if they scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, you know, they, it's the same thing. So if they want to know, Hey, I want to see some cool sample essays. Boom. They're right there. 
And then also another place to find is if they go to the FAQ, where we've built in some redundancy. I have some questions about this. I mean, this should hopefully answer all the questions they've got. So if you wanna do it, great, I'd love to have you, but you don't need to be there. If we signed up our site a month ago, how can we see our enrollment numbers to encourage more students to sign up? We don't have it built in that way to allow for that chastity. So I would just say, just keep encouraging, like just schedule, you know, a few weeks. We, like, we don't have it set up because it's just Ashley, you know, but we don't have it set up that we, we can know exactly how many students have signed up yet. So I would say just, you know, continue to remind students. I assume that many students haven't signed up because, you know, it sometimes takes many reminders. The other option, if you want to, chastity, is you can do basically... What some counselors do is they do, let me share my face again. They basically do, hey, does anybody not wanna be a part of this? If so, send me your email because otherwise I'm defaulting to opting you in. Now, obviously there, you, know, you have to make sure you've got permission to be able to do that, but that's worked for some counselors. You know, Casey at Beverly Hills was like, let me know if you don't want it. And only a couple students said they didn't want it. And so everybody got the emails and then they got the reminders. Now, if students want to unenroll, they totally can. They can, and we never email them anything separate from the course, of course. Um, okay, let me go back to the questions. Make sure I'm getting all of them. I don't have many questions in the chat box. So what questions do y'all have? Curious to hear. Some of the questions, Ashley, thank you for sharpshooting them in the chat box. Let's see. I still would like those tools. You just shared. Thank you for always sharing. Yeah, you got it. I mean, so Chastity, I mean, you're going to have them because you're signed up and it's inside the tool. So you'll have it all. And if you want to join, I'd love to. Cool, Marilyn. I'm so glad. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're part of it. Okay. Aled. Okay. Um, hi there. Thanks for hosting this workshop. No problem. Two questions. Many of the students I work with are not native English speakers and their writing abilities tend to vary quite greatly, totally. Sometimes I notice them struggling during the brainstorm phase because they find it hard to express themselves accurately in a language that isn't their own, totally. Do you have any advice for brainstorming students who are having some difficulty articulating ideas? And secondly, so before I get to that question, yes. Oftentimes, so first of all, I am i don't mind if students brainstorm and do their writing in another language, they're brainstorming because they're really just trying to get their ideas out. And you're right, we don't want them to get like, you know, second guessing and sort of, so if students, you know, I led this same content in a workshop in China two years ago, like summer before last, pre-pandemic. And many of the students just brainstorm in Chinese. Great, awesome. Now, if I'm talking to them, I, you know, they'll need to translate it for me. But that's a great way to free them up in the brainstorming phase so that they don't get you know, caught up. But one of the things that I find is true that isn't always, I think, always talked about is that I think that sometimes students have trouble not because of a language barrier, but because they don't have great brainstorming exercises. So one of the things that I would suggest is varying up some of the exercises. So, you know, again, these, I've given eight exercises. So the seven mini brainstorming exercises and the challenge is one. These tend to be pretty good cross-culturally. Not always, because sometimes students need to ask, you know, for the certain pieces of it. Well, what do you mean by an essence object? I'm not sure exactly what that means. And that takes a little bit of explanation. And then with the feelings and needs, sometimes students need to be clarified what is certain points. But once you clarify them, I find that these are pretty good. So they're they're time tested. And of course, I'm biased. Like these are the, but, but they've been through the ringer. Like I've, I've tested these with many students from many different cultures. So I guess my two pieces of advice are let them brainstorm in their native language. And then second, offer a variety of, of, of exercises. Many of my students are international who've moved to the US for high school. They often list the difficulties they face transitioning to a new country. Yep, yep. I don't want to invalidate their experiences, but I also have a feeling this topic is more common and less impressive. It's listed inside the tool. Am I being too dismissive about this topic? Thanks again. I don't think you are. I mean, this is the third culture kid essay, right? Where it's like, and I talk about this in, in the narrative side that when they're, when they're trying to address for the narrative, like let's say they've gone through the feelings and needs exercise and it says, is this a good topic or not? One of the things I talk about is like for students who have, like you just said, you know, been from, moved from one country to another or one school to another, and they're trying to write about that, that can be a pretty common topic. I'm not saying don't write about it, but I want to, I, I encourage them to actually go through the montage side. So what do I mean by this? I think a student who's faced challenges should also brainstorm the set, do the seven mini exercises to bring more variety because I don't want them to be so dialed in and committed to that challenge that they're not really getting into what are some of the other 
skills, qualities, values, and interests and how they've manifested through these different, you know, sides of me there or, you know, and how they're, how they're, because, because I think that sometimes students, like if they, if they go through an exercise and they brainstorm a challenge-based essay, some things they can become narrowly focused on only talking about that and they miss out on some of these other things. So I tell students who go through narrative, potentially your students who've, you know, faced this challenge to go through the montage. And oftentimes by going through the montage side, they get new ideas and then they come off of that topic. Because oftentimes I I find that students are committed to that first challenges based topic just because they don't have new ideas yet. And so with great brainstorming exercises, students can come up with a variety of options. So it's like, you know what? Yeah, I can kind of let that one go because there's this other cool idea that I, that I got that I'm, that I'm just as interested in. Do you have a quick two to three minute video of, of how to write the personal statement? I have a 20 minute video, Alex. So if you go to my YouTube channel, actually, Ashley, will you post a link to my YouTube channel? If you go to my YouTube channel, there's a 20 minute video, a two to three minute video of how to write the personal statement. I wonder if I do actually look at, just look at my YouTube channel. I'm trying to remember. I think I at one point did a two minute video and I just like went as fast as I could, but it's very hard to get into two minutes. I mean, I mean, I could do it in 30 seconds, you know, brainstorm using awesome brainstorming exercises. Uh, I don't know if I could do it in two minutes. Because I think you people would raise those questions. Well, what is an awesome brainstorming exercise? But I do have lots of tips on the YouTube videos. And so I would say, check those out. But um, but um, but um. Hi, Veronica. Glad to have you. I've rise from as a parent. Welcome. My son's school is huge and under-resourced. So I'm, oh, I missed the rest of your question. I want to hear it. He messages back. Okay. We were planning on the boot camp for the weekend of 20, May 23rd, but just found out that we're taking AP dates. We'll need to change our plans. What are the possible dates? We're also planning on the June PIQ workshop. Dorothy, don't worry. We just added a June date. And so, and you, you, I think just got an email about that. You maybe, or the email is coming on that. So don't worry. And then I'll just, just so you have it uh, at close at hand, just go to the college essay guy for schools page, which I'll link again, and you'll see the dates there. Um, let's see. Here we go. So Dorothy, just go to that. The date is June 14th to 18th. And Ashley, the, it's listed once, but as you scroll down on the page, uh, I just want to make sure that it's listed twice so that folks really see it. So will you just make a note to Devin to make sure that that it's it's listed everywhere? It's listed multiple times on the page, but it's June 14th to 18th um, is that is the, um, the PS course two. That's the boot camp two. Okay. And then we also added one for the personal statement, uh, the personal insight question. So there are two options for the personal insight question. So the PIQ session one is June 12th and 13th and the personal insight question, I'm going to just share my screen so that you're not like having to write all these things down. So you can, for all you visual learners. So again, the personal statement, you've got the option of the late May, the mid June, the early August. And then for the personal insight questions, there's the early June and the late October. And then for, or you know, not, not late October, but the whole October. And then for the supplemental essays, it's October 2nd, 3rd. That's a weekend thing. Cause we did that last year and it seemed to work pretty well. All right, we're at time. So let me see, let me see. Let me, I'm gonna do some like quick, quick, uh, quick takes on these. And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna do these probably in like, I'm going to, I'm going to extend by five minutes, forgive me. Um, but, but I want to make sure that you get your questions answered and, and we won't take any new questions at this point. If you've got a question, email help at college and, um, and I'll get you answered. But if you're a school counselor and you want to, if you like have bunches of questions, join one of my courses, they're paid what you can like, come in. I'd love to have you. And there's one going on right now. Um, Ashley, will you share a link on that just so that folks have it? Okay. Let's see if this is a quick one. Crudy, how does one deal with students, especially international, who initially would have opted for athlete applications, but eventually land uh, end up applying through academic or regular application route? Most often they've only focused on their sport and try to excel in it. Wouldn't their application be limited? Same with artists and musicians. Yes, definitely take those students through the montage path because, um, because especially if they're an athlete, recruited athlete, they've got it all over their activities list and additional info, write about something else. Yes, I agree with you that I think their application could be limited. The college wants to know besides fencing, because we we know all about your fencing skills. Tell me about something else. Same with artists and musicians. We've seen your portfolio. What else? Talk to me about these different identities. What are your other superpowers and skills? Can a student pick one value and pick three to five objects or ideas that feel strongly about because of the value? Yes, Renee, but it's an advanced thing. It's hard to write about one value in my experience, to write about diversity or to write about, I mean, it kind of depends on the value. 
but it's, I find that it's harder to do well in my personally. Um, are there resources specifically for parents or is it more appropriate for me to use the counselor resources? Veronica, use the counselor resources. I would say that's the one. My student tried a few things to write, no challenge, no clear career, and he's passionate about anime, which is a somewhat common topic, and I encourage him to write about it. He's kind of stuck describing it and saying it helps me with challenge, mostly telling instead of showing any advice. I would encourage him anew to brainstorm other possible topics because it could be that the student has other ideas, and anime is a somewhat common extracurricular activity and or interest, and so that might, I don't know, I would say brainstorm other possibilities. That's where I would send him. You're welcome, Anu. I'm so happy to help. But um bum bum. So uh Lori, just so folks were wondering where that PowerPoint is, every your your homepage, let me just share my screen again. Your homepage for all things counselor related are if you go into the tool and you just go to where it says counselors, you just click counselors and you'll come to this counselor resources page. And when it says CEG's one page guide to essay workshops. Okay, or if it says click here for workshop outlines and PowerPoint template, both of these lead to the same doc. And that's where you'll find that PowerPoint template. Okay, and, and again, anything that counselor related, like I have questions about these things or should be here. If there's something that's not here and you'd like it to be, here, let us know, we take feedback. Mm -hmm. I'd love to hear it and hopefully, I'm trying to keep it relatively simple, even though there's a lot of content there. I think you posted one last year. I love tips on giving feedback. I will talk to I will talk about that, Lori, in session three. So not the April sixth one, but the the May one. Let me just again post the, the share the dates of when these next. So coming up next, and I'm going to wrap here in two minutes. We this we did all this stuff on April sixth. I'm going to talk about how to create a great outline, and on May sixth, I'm going to give tons of tips on how to give great feedback, Lori. You're welcome, Alex. And Sarah, I registered for everything, but never got any emails, including the link to come to this meeting. Kara, I'm really sorry. So email help at collegeessayguy.com and Ashley will get back to you. I'm sorry that didn't come through. Will the PowerPoint for counselors to do the brainstorming exercise with the students be sent via email? It will not. It's inside CEG for Schools, just where I showed you. So again, go to counselors and then click here and it'll bring up this one page guide to workshops and boom, it's right there. Are we able to access the choose your own adventure tool? Is this only used for students in the workshops? You're able to access it too, Renee. So you, is, when you sign up for CEG for schools, you'll get access to it. It's the same access. You'll get a little login link and you can navigate it. And students can also see the counselor resources. We don't care. There's not like a separate login. It's just, you know, students work through the tool. The only difference is here's this page that's primarily for you. And it's got stuff for you. These things, these five links. How much do high schools usually pay? Julieta, Julieta, it's, it's, I mean, it, it, it's, a, it's a range. So if you look at the, the homepage again, you know what, and I just, again, want to just emphasize, let me just show you where this is. Many folks pay $0 because they have no budget. Some folks have a little bit of budget and so they'll pay 197. And then folks have a, some folks have a solid budget and they're like, great, thanks. We can, this is, this is a great deal. We've got the budget for it, 497. I mean, it just depends. And you know, everybody's, everybody's sort of different here. Ooh, we got kids coming in. We got kids coming in. They know that, that it's done and I need to be done anyway. Okay, um, let's see. I've, I'll just do one more question. Let's see if it's a quick one. Bum, ba -dum, bum, bum. Let's see. Links to the new dates page. Ted. I went to a Harvard info session when essays came up. The admission officer said some essays from the essays of Harvard students should have been in another book, How I Got Into Harvard Despite My Essay. Have you had any experience such as, yes. Sometimes you look at an essay and you're like, wow, that student got in? Interesting. So I, the, all the essays that I talk about are great essays. Many of them got into great schools, but some of them, the opposite was true. I think the student wrote an amazing essay and the reason they got in was, not, the reason they didn't get in was not because of their essay. Does that make sense? So my commitment is to getting students to do great writing that demonstrates their deepest or their widest stories. Widest meaning demonstrates lots of different sides of them. And I feel like um, if a student does that, then they've done their job. And then it's, you know, they've done their activities list. They've done their additional info. They've done their supplemental essays. And they've done the jobs. Check the boxes there. The rest is in the hands of the admissions officer, right? So that's, that's well, that's all the student, student can control. But in short, Ted, yes, totally hear you. Um, I've seen those and I've seen the opposite. So, all right, I'm over time. 
Thank you all for being here. I'll see you all on April 6th. Much love and um, peace.